Jesus is our hope, he is our peace, and he is sovereign and on the throne today. This is Hope Today. We're so glad that you're with us. I'm Anna Schmidt, and I'm here with Pastor Jay Gilbert. Pastor Jay, we've got a lot to talk about and pray about today. We really do, and if uh, unless you've been under a rock somewhere, uh, I'm sure you have saw the on the news the assassination attempt upon former President Trump that took place in Butler, Pennsylvania, on Saturday. And you know, um, there's a lot of things that we can speculate about, but we really want to focus on the family. And I believe you have. Uh, a letter here that from yes. the daughter of the father that passed. This is such a powerful letter from the young woman whose father was killed on Saturday. Her name is Allison Comparator. And we wanted to read this because she talks all about her dad who is now with Jesus. She said, on Saturday, time stopped. And when it started again, my family and I started living a real life nightmare. What was supposed to be an exciting day that we had all looked forward to, especially my dad, turned into the most traumatizing experiences someone could imagine. I know the media will cover this event, but I want everyone to know what the media will not cover and will not say about him. He was the best dad a girl could ever ask for. My sister and I never needed for anything. You call, he would answer, and he would do whatever it is you needed. He was a man of God, loved Jesus fiercely, and also looked after our church and our members as family. The media will not tell you that he died a real life superhero. They are not going to tell you how quickly he threw my mom and I to the ground. They're not going to tell you that he shielded my body from the bullet that came at us. He loved his family. He truly loved us enough to take a real bullet for us. And I want nothing more than to cry on him and tell him thank you. I want nothing more than to wake up and for this to not be reality for me and my family. We lost a selfless, loving husband, father, brother, uncle, son, and friend. And I will never stop thinking about him and mourning over him until the day that I die too. July 13th will forever be a day that changed my life. There are a lot of children out there that say their dad is their superhero, but my dad really is mine. I don't think I would be here today without him. Dad, I love you so much that there aren't enough words to express how deep that love goes. I know that God is proud of the man that came to his gates on Saturday. That's a moving, moving letter. Like, grab the tissues. Yeah. And it just, it brings such a, such a realness to the life of the person that was lost. And also what, what an amazing thing that he loved Jesus and that Jesus name gets to be proclaimed in the midst of this great tragedy. You know, what's sad is that you're probably not going to hear a lot about that, yeah. even though they talked about how important his faith was to him. You know, ladies and gentlemen, it's so important that we're going to be focusing a lot in the media, not us per se, but what happened with President Trump and what happened at the bullet almost grazed his ear. But you know what? The real casualty is this family. Right. President Trump is going to live. Yes. President Trump is going to move on. His family, he can go home, embrace his wife. But there are people right now, like Allison, that have lost everything and we need to begin to pray for them because what will happen is everybody will focus on what happened, what happened to the sniper, what happened to the shooter, what happened to this, how come nobody picked it up? Not understanding there are people right now that are weeping themselves to sleep. This family is because they've lost their father. Yes, yep, absolutely. And I'm so glad that we as the Christian media and hopefully it will start to spread like wildfire across social media, like if we're seeing this to share it so that we know this story. Amen. And you know, what I want to do is I want to take a minute and we want to just pray right now for the victim's family, for unity. Uh, there's a lot going on. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to really begin to intercede. You know, what came to my spirit, Anna, when we were, um, when we found, first found out about this, I started praying. I said, God, how do you want me to pray? And I said, God, get the glory. You know, he uses 
everything. The Bible says all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and to them that are called according to his purpose. So I don't know what the mind of Christ is on every single circumstance yet. But as we pray, we can pray according to the will of God. And we do need unity. Right. We do need our nation to come together. We do need an end to all the gun violence and all the things that are happening. And so why don't we just take a minute right now? Do you want to take a minute and pray? And then yes. I'll take a minute and pray. And let's just Absolutely. intercede for the family and all the things that are going on. Yes. Oh, Heavenly Father, we cry out to you today, a nation that so desperately needs you. God, we pray that as a nation that we would humble ourselves before you, that we would turn from our wicked ways and that we would surrender our lives fully to you, God, because in you, is hope in you is peace and unity and victory and Lord we are so thankful that you are sovereign and you are on the throne and though this was a surprise to us this was not a surprise to you and you hold all the details all the inner workings in your hand Lord may you be glorified in this we pray this in Jesus name and Father, we just thank you for each person that's in agreement and that there's no distance in these airwaves, Father. And Lord, we need unity, Father, between the right and the left, oh God. We need yes. unity amongst the, all the Republicans, Democrats, independents, and even those that aren't voting, Father God. But Lord, we just pray today, Father, for the peace of, of, of God upon every heart and upon every life, Father. We pray, Father God, for every elected official that there would be covering and protection. And Lord, we pray against the retaliation retaliation of the enemy. There are many that are angry and bitter and hurt from what has happened, Father. But Lord, we're just asking that your healing anointing would just begin to flow, Father. That this would spark a revival in the earth. That you would use what the devil has meant for evil and turn it for our good. And so Lord, we pray, Father God, for Allison and her family, Father, and a comprator family, Father God. We just ask today, Father God, that you would just cover them, comfort them Father God, speak to them. And Lord, use this, Father, that you would get the glory. And Father, we'll not forget to give you all the praise, the honor, and all of the glory. And we pray that even from now through throughout the rest of the election with the national convention going on tonight, Father God, we just pray your blessing to be upon all things and that protection and covering and that spirit of murder would be destroyed today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, yeah. amen, amen. You know, Pastor Jay, uh, for the past couple weeks, it was probably two weeks ago, the Lord kept speaking a scripture to my heart. Like I kept seeing it over and over and over again as I was going throughout my days. And it was Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. And you know, I kept saying like, Lord, why, why are you showing this to me so many times? And I felt in my spirit before this all started, like something big is gonna happen. Yeah. And I didn't know what it was. And as, when that happened, I, that scripture came flooding right back. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. And you know, we're all trying, listening to the media. We're trying to make sense of it. And yet God says to just trust Amen. in him. He will make our paths straight one day at a time just to trust. Amen. Him. And you know, I'm real excited because our guest who's here with us today is a pastor. And uh, he's come here today to share about his book about hope after church hurt. So we're gonna be getting into his book, but I would like to bring Pastor Joe Dobbins on right now uh, because I want him to just speak to us about what happened in his church yesterday. Pastor, I know that you're aware of the shooting that happened here in Butler, Pennsylvania, just about an hour from where we're recording right now. And uh, I would love for you to just to hear, to share with the people, hear what God has put upon your heart and also what you shared with your congregation yesterday. 
Anna, Jay, thanks for having me. Um, you know, the reality is we all were grieved with this family and also shocked at the things that we saw happen in Pennsylvania. But the reality is God's word gives us strength. Immediately, our prayer was Psalm 16 that says, just keep us safe, O Lord, as you are a refuge. Um, so we immediately turned our hearts to the Lord. But I think what we emphasize more than ever is that now is time for the church to be the church, Amen. meaning the city that is supposed to sit on a hill, a place of unity, a place of sanctuary, a place where people can come with different ideas, but yet all of them are submitted at the foot of the cross. And we just believe that as unity is modeled within a church, as we show how to love one another, and Jesus said in John 17 that we would be one, that it becomes a model for those outside the church. Our prayer is, is that people would look inside of our churches and they would go, something is different there because of the way those interact with one another. And it would cause them that curiosity to want to know the Lord Jesus and how to operate under his kingdom. Amen. What did you sense kind of in your ministry uh, yesterday? What was the kind of the temperature, the pulse of the people? What were you sensing? I definitely think that people are scared. Uh, they're concerned. Uh, we haven't seen an assassination attempt in a few decades. And so to see something like that, I think clearly brings people to a place where all of a sudden the rhetoric goes away and they recognize that there's real evil in the world and that prayer is an essential, not a luxury any longer, that we must be a prayerful people. And so I found that people's hearts were quick to turn to prayer. Uh, and I think that's a wonderful thing. You know, I believe that that Psalm 91 blessing is never more important than it is right now. There is so much fear going on. I was thinking about everything that's going on. We had a, a, a possible assassination of President Trump uh, here in the Pennsylvania area. We also had a shooting in a Jewish synagogue. About a couple of months ago, we had an assassination attempt on a pastor. There's been all sorts of things that have happened. I believe that the spirit of fear is really trying to creep into uh, the body of Christ and into the world at large. What would you say to people that are battling with fear in the middle of all of this, or even even anger and hurt, what would you share with them? Yeah, that's such an insightful way to look at things because fear often in people's lives is their greatest motivator. But we know that uh, scripture tells us that God's not given us a spirit of fear, Amen. that he actually leads us through power, love, and he's given us a sound mind to make decisions according to the mind of Christ. So for any person who is being motivated by fear, you have to consider it's most likely the enemy trying to influence your life. And it's time to, as Second Corinthians 10 says, tear down that stronghold, return to the word of God, and allow that to be the guiding force, guiding decision maker of your life. Amen. Amen. And so I'm glad that you shared that because there are people that definitely need that type of encouragement. You know, fear is usually because of one or, or anger is because of one or two reasons. Either people are afraid or they're hurt. You know, and in your book here, Hope After Church Hurt, really you could kind of remove the church out right now and just look at hurt. There's so many people, Pastor, that are angry because they've been hurt by the church. There's people that are battling right now. I'm sure there's people that want to retaliate because of everything that's going on with uh, President Trump and just so many different things that are happening in the world. Tell us a little bit about this book and why God put it upon your heart and how people can get through the hurt that they're experiencing. Well, I had a conversation in our lobby one day with a woman who um, was new to our church and through a, a, kind of going through the conversation, she made this statement. She said, I love Jesus, but I just can't stand his people. And that sent me down a trail to discover that um, some studies show as many as 65 million Americans used to attend church, but wow. no longer do. And the phrase church hurt has become something that trends on social media. There are docu-series about it. The reality is there's not just a loss that need to be found, but there's found that need to be healed. And so I think today, um, more than ever, there are people who do love Jesus, but struggle to be a part of his body and they need to be healed. So this book is my attempt to help them. It's got a positive tone. I tell a ton of personal stories and hopefully it's a path forward for people to re-engage uh, with a fresh faith and, and actually find their place in the body, but also find the peace that they're desperately looking for. You know, as we've been on here lately, we've heard a lot of different people writing books about church hurt and hurt and how to overcome. Why do you think all of this is happening? We're taking a look at all of the pastors that are falling from grace and different things that are happening. What is your take on it? Uh, and how should the church 
be looking at the hurt that experience because it's going to happen if you go to church long enough just like if you're in family if you're in marriage you're going to get hurt what should be our perspective on these matters when we're hurt well it, it, fallen leaders are definitely one of the essential things that we have to address as a matter of fact in the book i address eight unique hurts because i think each one has a different sting and therefore needs a different path forward. But uh, I do talk about disappointment with leaders. C.S. Lewis said that of all bad men, religious bad men are the worst. And what he was alluding to is the idea that when we look at a godly leader who does ungodly things, it seems like there's an extra measure of difficulty with that. But I think it's one of those, in those moments that we stop and we are remind ourselves that Jesus didn't say, follow my followers. He said, follow me. And out of that, we have to return to him. And I, I, the two things that I would say to just encourage people who are struggling with a fallen leader or even with just any measure of hurt in the church is, first of all, God understands. You know, don't forget that Jesus was rejected by nearly every group of people that he ever interacted with. And some of his worst rejections came from religious leaders. But also remember that God is just. You know, we hold on to pain because we believe that if we let go of it, that the person gets that, that hurt us is off the hook. But, you know, when a detective comes into a crime scene, they collect all of the evidence and they put it through a very tedious process to preserve it so that justice can be served. I believe God does the same thing. Psalm 58, 6 says that he collects all of our tears. And I believe that he has every tear that we've ever cried because of that hurt. And it's evidence that something wrong took place against us. And I believe he holds that so that he can execute justice so that we don't have to hold our pain, but we can receive his peace because we know he's just. Amen. Amen. You know, Pastor, would you take a minute right now? Because I know that forgiveness is hard for a lot of people. Would you just speak quickly to the area of forgiveness and then just pray a prayer over the people, however the Lord lays it upon your heart, that they would be able to find healing and that they would find hope after whatever hurt that they're experiencing. I would love to. Forgiveness is a key part of your healing. And Jesus tells us clearly in scripture that you'll never feel your way into forgiveness. There's not gonna be a day that you just decide, oh, I feel like forgiving. It's a choice. It's a decision you have to make today. And the way that we make that decision is first, we decide that that person no longer holds any, we don't hold anything against them. They don't owe us an apology. They don't owe us resolve. Um, the reality is we're letting them go. And then in following that back up, Jesus said to bless those who curse you. What I want to challenge you to do is a daily exercise. I want you to pray a blessing over the person that hurt you. Now, I know that's incredibly difficult and almost seems impossible, but I believe the spirit of God is going to help you. Even if it just starts with something as simple as God help them have a good day. And here's what's going to happen. You performing that exercise is going to allow the work of God to begin in your heart. And you're going to find peace start to relate, re, replace pain. You're going to see a difference in your own heart. And eventually, you're not even going to feel the pain that you had anymore because you're going to have received forgiveness, extended forgiveness, and peace is going to govern your mind. I, I can't imagine how difficult that is, whether it's sexual abuse or it's a leader who treated you wrong, someone who gossiped about you. But know this, forgiveness will not happen out of your own strength. It's a divine work of God in your heart. So let's begin right now with asking the Holy Spirit to do that work in us. Father, we come to you today. And I pray for every single person watching, Lord, so much pain, so much hurt, but you understand. And out of that understanding, Holy Spirit, you are going to give them a supernatural ability to begin this healing process, to begin to release the pain to you, to begin to, to walk through the path of forgiveness. And God, on the other side, they're going to receive peace and joy. They will laugh again. They will have friends again. They will enjoy their walk with you again. And so supernaturally in their homes, their kitchens, their cars, as they're watching this program today, may they sense the ministry of the Holy Spirit helping them to walk in a fresh day and a path of healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hope after church hurt. Ladies and gentlemen, go get that book. Thank you so much, Pastor Joe. We appreciate your time. Such an honor to be with you. Amen.
It's always such a good conversation to talk about healing from hurt because we're all going to go through a hurt during our lifetime. And right. uh, the, the key, one of the keys is forgiveness for sure, because as we forgive, it allows us to release that bitterness and that resentment. And like Pastor said, step into that joy again. Amen. 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 Yes, well, we're going to transition very quickly into our second guest today. Her name is Dr. Katherine Paysauer. She's a former college professor and is passionate about helping first year college students stay the course through the many challenges and temptations of college. She joins us now to share tips for both parents and students as they prepare for their first year of college. Dr. Katherine, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. We're so thankful to have both you and the pastor today because mm -hmm. as a nation in all of these different scenarios that we are learning, uh, seeking how to process what happened over the weekend with the attempted assassination. And we think of our kids who are about to enter into college in just a few weeks. How would you, through your experience, encourage those students to face the just the, the different conversations, the division, and to be able to stand firm. It was a tragic circumstance on Saturday, but of course we've been leading up to it with the conflict that we've been having in our country. And um, it's not just a, a political conflict, it's a spiritual conflict and an individual conflict as we struggle with our own uh, desires and trying to make sense of it all. And so I loved uh, Pastor Joe's prayer. It was so, so helpful. And we in our church talked about it yesterday as well. And I'm sure it happened in many, many churches, but just stay in prayer. We've got to seek his guidance. And in your previous interview, there's this great example that he gave that Jesus is our leader. So we have to seek his guidance as to how to get through and our young people are so vulnerable to all of these situations that occur. And we've just got to wrap them up in prayer, not just the ones going off to college. Of course, that's my passion, but all of our young people, they are our future. And so we need to be the mentors to show them how important it is to love one another and be compassionate and respectful and not let all these situations bring us down. We've, we've got to follow the example of Jesus and love everyone, no matter what, and then pray for them in situations where they are, are struggling with the, the right behaviors to demonstrate. Right. Now, Dr. Catherine, you wrote a book called Stay the Course, and it's a devotional handbook to survive and thrive in your first year of college and beyond. Well, statistics are saying that 70 to 80% of high school students who enter college as Christians leave with little or no faith. Is this why you wrote this book? It was one of the reasons. Also, I didn't realize that the statistics were quite that high until I began uh, doing research for the book. But it's, we're sending our students into a new world. You know, no matter when they grad, whether they graduate and go to college or graduate and go and into the workforce, it's a new world for them. So they're faced with people that don't believe the same way that they do. They are inundated with new philosophies and actions and behaviors, things that they're not familiar with. And so it's a time where they're trying to absorb all this and make sense of it all. And so their, their faith comes into question as well. So we've got to pray for our students and help them maintain the firm foundation and faith that they had growing up and keep the communications line open and have them be able to feel comfortable talking to their parents or someone on the campus. One of the most important things that our college students can do to help maintain their faith is to seek out a faith family when they get to campus. And it may be on campus if it's a faith-based institution or even secular institutions will have faith-based organizations. So the students can seek out students that believe, have the same beliefs as they do or in the community. Churches will offer uh, organizations and clubs for 
college students meetings, regular meetings, so that they can voice out some of these things that are troubling them because they will be faced with so many things that are confusing. They're vulnerable at this time. So we need to pray for them and then encourage them to seek out others and even secular institutions where we tend to believe that they are, are so liberal will have organizations and groups that meet that will allow students to help maintain their faith-based community. Yes. Well, Dr. Catherine, we have just a few seconds left. Can you please pray for the students that will be heading off to their first year of college in just a few weeks? Yes, I will, and thank you. Father, we love you, and this is such a confusing time not just for us grown-ups, but especially for our younger people as they see the struggles and the conflicts in our world. They can see it every day on the news or in social media, and it's, it's such pressure on them. We know that you love them, that you've wrapped your loving arms around them. We pray that you'll be with them as they go out into this new adventure of the workforce or of college, that you will help them find people that will support them in their faith journey and in their journey to succeed in whatever chosen career they have chosen to work toward. We pray that you'll surround them with loving mentors, with teachers or co-workers or supervisors that help them on this journey. And especially, Father, each of us help us to know how we can mentor to our beginning college students and to our young people overall, that they will see through our lives that we love you, that we love you and that we love them and that we are praying for your protection for them and that they will succeed on their journey, whatever it might be, but that it will always be on your pathway, walking with you. And in the precious name of Jesus, we pray that. Amen. And thank you so much, Dr. Catherine. This devotional that you wrote just for students ready to enter college, stay the course. And what a wonderful resource to help them grow in their faith even as they go off to college. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. It's been a wonderful experience and so happy that I was able to hear Pastor Joe at the beginning. Thank you. You all have a blessed day and evening. You as well. Oh, Pastor Jay, so much packed into this show today. Final thoughts. Well, you know, I think it's very important that we understand everything is wrapped up in this. You know, ladies and gentlemen, whether you're dealing with church hurt, whether you're dealing with going to college for the first time, or whether or not you're battling with what you should be thinking about with President Trump, you know, the Bible says in all your ways, acknowledge him. You mentioned this scripture earlier and he will direct your path. Trust in him with all your heart. And if we can get back to the, world, the, the church's way and the kingdom way of thinking, we are going to have the success that God has called us to have. So in everything, get the mind of Christ and he will bless your life. On tomorrow's Hope Today, enjoy an inspired collection of song and spoken word. Songwriter and producer Mark D. Conklin reveals his newest project featuring a veritable who's who of gospel, soul, and country music names that offers a fresh perspective on the New Testament book of Mark. That's what's on tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.